Thanks very much, Mark. Uh, I begin tonight with the acknowledgement of the country and I pay my respects on behalf of us all to the traditional owners of the land in which we meet and pay my respects to elders past and present. I thank the Metropolitan Transport Forum organisers for their work to ensure we have an opportunity to discuss these public policy issues tonight. To our Chair, Banyol City Councilman Mark D. Pasquale, my thanks for the leadership you have shown with your engagement on many projects with the State Government. Differences of opinion are respected and our desire to work in the best interests of our community have reaped significant dividends for the uh, local people here these past four years. To my parliamentary colleagues in the Upper House, David Davis and Samantha Dunn, welcome to the Ivanhoe electorate. Sam, of course, is one of our representatives in the Upper House for Eastern Metro. And of course to you, the residents of Banyul, for taking the time to participate tonight because it just wouldn't be a forum without you. Let me outline some key challenges and opportunities because for me, good transport links are about keeping communities connected. Rail corridors, graffiti and vegetation is a constant struggle dealing with Vic roads, for example. However, our road corridors are a heck of a lot better when you think about lawn mowing, graffiti and rubbish removal. It's resorts and there are clear lines of responsibility. Try getting the lawn mowed on rail reserves land or graffiti removed. Try getting a fence fixed for a neighbour that backs onto a rail reserve. The Public Transport Victoria, VicTrack, Metro Trains Melbourne, the Department of Economic Development, Jobs, Transport and Resources, the Council or the local MP. We're investing heavily in rail infrastructure and must resource and improve these public spaces for local residents and commuters. We need far simpler lines of accountability and responsiveness from authorities. Our rail corridors, for the most part, are a visual blight and it would seem nobody cares. Take a look at the state, Sydney and Brisbane, a heck of a lot better than anything Melbourne has to offer. Because they don't accept it. And we're not uh, serious about being an attractive, livable city until we value our public places. Rail corridors are a poor neighbour, and that's something that needs to change and something that I want to raise tonight. I thank Banyol residents for their patience. Nobody can miss the fact that our government has delivered the $395 million Vestbridge Line upgrade. The key aspects have been the removal of Boom Gates at Grange Road, Elfington, and Lower Plenty Road, Rosanna. The highlight for me, of course, having grown up in Viewbank and Rosanna, was putting an end to being stuck in a train either side of that 1.2 kilometres of single track between Mozart and Heidelberg, waiting for a train coming the other way. Duplicating the track, excavating a new tunnel, building new Burgundy Street Bridge has allowed us to revise the Hurst Bridge Line timetable and add 50 extra weekday services from August 26. Power upgrades, new substations at McLeod and Eagle and signalling upgrades are challenging, but they will power those extra trains. Boom gates removed and traffic flow and pedestrian safety is also improved. It's a $140 million project on its own. It wasn't an election commitment, but it made sense to do that with the level crossing removals. And I thank my local parliamentary colleagues, Vicky Ward and Eltham, Colin Brooks in Bandura, and Danielle Green in Yang Yang. We need to get and have that project done if we're ever going to duplicate beyond Greensy. Uh, I also wanted to say that across the six stations in the Ivanhoe electorate, McLeod, Rosanna, Heidelberg, Egelmont, Ivanhoe and Darabur, those extra services are the big payoff for commuters, and that, so I say, the roll on August 26. Along with many other hundreds of locals, I attended the community celebration when we opened the new Rosanna station last weekend. Too often we become desensitised to our surroundings. Too many of our train stations are not fit for purpose. We can do so much better, we should expect better, and Rosanna is a case in point. I regularly ride to Parliament with the Speaker, my Bandura colleague, Colin Brooks. I cut across the Sparks Reserve in Ivanhoe through to Kew and meet there thanks to the completion of the Darabinera Trail extension an $80 million project. The Andrews government's committed to deliver the farm road extension from Ivanhoe to Elkington, and negotiations with Landos are progressing well. I'm not sure if David Davis drove by the Chandler Highway Bridge in his way here from the other side of the Yarra, but I do note that the $110 million duplication of the Chandler Highway Bridge, particularly well driven by the late member for North Fiona Richardson, includes better cycling underpasses so we can stay on the Yarra Trail. We don't have to climb dozens of steps with our bikes to continue our Yarra Boulevard ride to the city. Retaining the historic bridge for residents is also um, a very important to be welcomed by locals. 44,000 vehicles use that road, that uh, river link, to travel to Ivanhoe and West Heidelberg every day. Governments are yet to realise the full potential of bus services and the opportunities they can provide to local neighbourhoods. This year's budget included several upgrades to local metro bus services, particularly on Sundays, on the 517, 518 and 566 services. Election equipments were also delivered and they include peak services on the 517 route to cater for Viewbank College students, my old school, where there were significant patronage increases at school times. A pilot bus shuttle service funded between McLeod Station, Reservoir Station and La Trobe Uni, jointly funded between our government 
and La Trobe, the two drive better connectivity for uni students has been very well received. It's been hard diligent work over four years to make improvements on Rosanna Road Corridor, truck curfew, 850,000 on safety audit works on Lower Clean Road and Rosanna Road, $3 million coupon in the budget to add pedestrian lights at Yarra and Brown Streets, 40k electric signs between Darabin Street and Banksia Street, new traffic lights at the intersection of Rosanna Road and St James Road. Just last week, $900,000 contract signed for traffic safety cameras for red lights and speeding, Banyal Road and Darabin Streets, they'll be installed this year. Of course, that leads to our broader initiatives to build the North East Think and our government's desire to turn like, return local roads to local residents. The government has been very clear that we'll work up our very best detailed design for the North East Think and present, present a final effort to the community in the coming weeks. 45,000 vehicles a day on Rosanna Road, an extraordinary 14 hour long peak hour that runs from 6am to 7pm. The traffic volume divides communities. Our government's committing to putting forward solutions at this election for voters to consider. Further afield, the opening of the $600 million Murder Line extension is complete. Services begin on Sunday, August 26. That will relieve significant pressure on our road and rail network through the Ivanhoe electorate. It's catering for 8,000 extra commuters a day. Our government's also committed $520 million to Hurstbridge Line 2 upgrade. It's critical for our local area. I'm often hosting mobile offices at our train stations. Invariably, they're often people from Eltham and Diamond Creek and further afield because there's not enough peak hour services operating beyond Greensy. High capacity signalling upgrades and untangling the Clifton Hill Junction will continue to deliver service improvements on the Clifton Hill Group. Effectively, across the Murder and Hurstbridge lines, over a billion dollars have been spent over the past four years to deliver these upgrades. A further $520 million alone is committed on the Hurstbridge line if we're re-elected. The only party who can count on to deliver Hurstbridge line stage two is the party that delivered Hurstbridge line stage one upgrade. Just as the Andrews government is delivering the $11 billion Melbourne Metro Tunnel, Ask yourself who you can trust to deliver Melbourne Metro 2. I'm excited about the projects that we have in store for the future, yet nobody has monopoly on good ideas. Uh, just as I was here four years ago, I look forward to our discussions tonight and I thank you very much.